Hey, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Christy Lowe. I'm your host, and I am so, so, so glad you were here. Not just that you're here, that, like we always meet, but this is the first episode for the fall season for the fall, however you want to call it. Some people call them seasons. I took a break this summer, y'all, and I'm just going to tell you I needed it in the very worst way. I, I We're going to talk about burnout today. We are talking about slow living. And this episode today is meeting me right where I was and right where I am. So the timing of this could not be better. I am joined today by Jody Grubbs. Jody, I am so excited you're here. I've wanted to talk to you for so long, and I'm so glad we could connect. So welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you, Christy. I'm so excited to be here, and I just look forward to our conversation. It's it's going to be amazing. Well, you've written a book about to live slowly. The name of your book is Live Slowly, A Gentle Invitation to Exhale which immediately makes me realize how often I am holding my breath. <laughs> a lot of us are. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to just, I, I, I have so many questions for you. We could go for days. I kid you not on all the things. But for my friends who haven't met you yet, introduce yourself a little bit. Tell, tell us where you're from. Give us, give us a little bit of backstory. Sure. So I'm Jody and... I live in the Raleigh, North Carolina area. Yeah. Been here for a while. I was an island child growing up, though. I was born on an island in the Caribbean. It's called Bonaire, near Aruba. Left when I was 16. Went, went to New Jersey for two years and then um, the Carolinas in Georgia. So I was a missionary kid for most of my life. And um, yeah, just living here in the South now and trying to implement the things I learned on the island. Yes. Well, and you are a <laughs> woman after my own heart. I, the beach and I are besties. I, I, my secret desire is to live on a beach in my golden years. I, yes. I am mildly jealous that you grew up your first 16 years uh, on the beach. Was that just glorious? Did you have any idea back then how glorious that was? No, it's all I knew. And yet we would have just throws of tourists come in. And yeah. I thought, oh, yeah, the, like this must be special. People just keep coming to see everything here. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just my everyday life. Yeah. I guess it's because, I mean, it's what you don't know. But we don't have throngs of people that show up in West Texas just to okay. come visit. That doesn't happen yeah. to us. No. No, you have to be, you have to decide you want to come here to get here. And then often they're like, why have you stayed all these years? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, what's funny is I say that it keeps the riffraff out because it's kind of, we're West Texas, we have wind and dirt and not very, not near enough trees. If I could change one thing about this place, it would just be the number of trees. Oh, so yeah. you... You fools over in Raleigh, North Carolina. I am, <laughs> again, I'm jealous. Y'all are going to think I'm struggling with jealousy. I'm really not. It's just, I would love some trees and some water. That's, is that too much for a girl to ask, Jody? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, in, I, I loved, I, I loved reading your book, by the way. And y'all know I love Thank to you. read. And it, it, it has settled books, whenever a book settles on me and like it, it starts to rest and I start to kind of process and, and, and take in what you, you offered in the book. And I, I, I I'm not, I'm not fangirling here. I'm just, I got to tell you, there were parts of your book that were just so poignantly and beautifully written that you start out, you talk about a really hard story. Your first husband, Brian was in a horrible accident and your world pretty much got turned upside down. I'm going to quote you here. You said, when someone lives who should have died, your world just shifted. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. And then I want you to, to tell us about how the Lord slowed you down. Yeah. So yeah, that was just an awful awful time in our yeah. lives. Brian was in a horrific accident pinned under a semi truck. And so, yeah, there's just a long, long recovery, nine months in the hospital. And he had to learn how to do everything all over again. He made a full recovery and then passed away 
just his aorta burst just from, you know, 33 surgeries, just so much going on. And so that slows you down in your tracks. You have to rethink life even at a young age. Um, how, how old were you when that happened? So 27 at the accident and then 29 when he died. Yeah. Okay. And he actually died 25 years ago yesterday. So really, that was, yeah, yeah. It's been a quarter of a century and sometimes it feels like a lifetime ago and other times it, it seems quite recent. Yeah. That trauma does that. It, yes. Yeah. So I remarried and we had a little girl and started just living the, the fast paced yes. American life with church and everything going on. And my body started not responding well to that saying, wait, wait a minute. I don't know this. <laughs> and so I had to slow down. So every fall I would start getting sick. I would get pneumonia, bronchitis, strep, and I was just running the roads. And so at that point, my doctor said, you need to slow down this isn't good for you. Your body's trying to tell you. So I realized I had to go back to island time mm. and start implementing what I'd known all those years ago. Okay. Talk to uh, me about island time. Tell me about that. Yeah. So island time, you know, people joke about it like, oh, oh yeah, island time. <laughs> but really it's almost a rhythm. It's not a schedule. Uh, it's this rhythm where People are not in a hurry. So they might be busy with important things they have to do, but they stop to say hi to each other, lots of face-to-face -face time, lingering over meals, resting when they need to. Everything closed down on the island <laughs> for two hours for lunch every day. Yes, um, yeah, that was just normal. And so, yeah, having to go back to some of the simpler ways of life and pausing, having more white space on my calendar, I had to really mm. implement the things that come natural to island living that are not. So I almost had to reteach myself some things. And after a while, your body's like, yep, we remember this. We remember. <laughs> okay. So where yeah. did it start? So whenever you were like, okay, I've got to slow this down. I've got to do this. Where does, where does one start to do that? <laughs> yeah. So, well, I write about in my books, usually it's when slowing down is chosen for you. Um, yes. <laughs> that's usually when it starts. Most of us don't say, I think in two months I'm going to just slow down and it'll be great. Like, no, yeah. that doesn't happen. It's it's usually our bodies tell us, which is a health scare, or it could be a traumatic event where you literally have to pause and be present for somebody in your life. And so, I think mostly if, if, if we, I'm not trying to oversimplify it, Christy, but if we sit with God more during that time and say, what do you want me to do? It's not just sitting around, but is it spending more time with certain people face to face? Is it maybe being present more in certain areas instead of rushing around to where we're not, we're not face to face with certain people that God is calling us to be in our lives. Maybe it's more time alone with God. Not more Bible studies, but maybe just quiet, being in his presence, that solitude. So I always say if you're alone, but not lonely, that solitude. And sometimes we just can't hear that still small voice unless we're quiet yeah. with God. And then having more white space on your calendar, your nervous system calms down a little bit when you see that, whether it's on your phone or on your paper calendar. And then when some things come up that you're really needed, you can say yes, because you've already said no. So the stress is not there for some of the hard things that will inevitably still keep coming up while you're forcing the slow down and while you're walking in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're, you're speaking my language. I, I told you before we started recording and I, I think I mentioned it at the top of the show, you know, we're going into a new school year. This is the fall season, which for a lot of people is a really, really busy season. And so we're talking, we're, we're having this conversation when the white space is less. Yeah. I, and I do not believe in coincidences. I believe the Lord ordained this conversation for, for such a time as this, because we're all, we are all stretched too far. We're stretched right. too thin. 
What do you tell that woman right now who is listening to this and going, oh, you're funny. You you want us to have some more white space? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Huh? How am I going to do that? So how do we get more white space where we don't have a lot? Yeah. Well, the first thing is just be honest with yourself and what's your capacity? You know, some of us don't I have. Wrote, I wrote. <laughs> Let's talk about capacity. It's oh. on my notes right over here. I kid you not. So I'm like, girl, preach. Yes, it 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 is one of the main things is you first have to figure out what your capacity is. If you're in a season where you're being stretched thin, it's not wise to go into the fall full throttle. You're never you're not gonna make it out. <laughs> So no. I didn't make it out of five or six falls in a row. I had bronchitis <laughs> and strap around Halloween. I have many Halloweens. I sat in my driveway in a lawn chair because I couldn't walk around the neighborhood with everybody. I was so sick. Mm -hmm. So I'm the older sister saying, I see you and I know you don't think you can take things off. But if you think of your capacity first, that just take an honest look at it. You might need to dial back on a few things. So maybe it won't come off your calendar, but you're going to need to say, I'm going to go to this event, stay for 60 minutes, and I'm going to have to leave. You know, mm -hmm. it can start small. So yeah. we have obligations. So the other thing is being honest about what's an obligation and what's something you just think you have to do because everybody's doing it. Oh, the yeah. have tos or the shoulds. The shoulds. Yeah. Yeah. Some of these things we don't. And when we finally get the guts to tell someone, I really can't do this, they're like, okay. I've had so many women say, I stressed for a year over stepping down from something. I didn't even get a thank you note. And I'm like, I know, I'm sorry, but we're replaceable. <laughs> Totally. We're all, all of us, as it turns out. As it turns out. And so yes. we cannot, between your capacity and your core values, if this is a season where God's asking you to pour into, say, a parent or a child or a ministry, don't say yes to all these other things. You won't be able to give to those things that are so important to you. So I think it's really serious. It's something that we need to really look at. The other thing is other countries don't do this, Christy. I know people yeah. say, how can I, what do you mean? And other places don't live like this. It, it is an American thing where we put the pressure on ourselves and each other. So part of my yeah. book is this invitation to exhale is saying, y'all, we need to come up for air. We yeah. cannot keep going, right? And so... I think just an honest look at what are your core values and what's God calling you to do and having permission to step back if you need to before you have to step back because you're forced to. Hmm. Do you, okay. So yeah. I, just for the record, my people listening at home, Jody and I were emailing about this and normally I send people some questions and be like, Hey, these are the questions I'm going to ask you, Jody. I did not send you any questions. Did I? No, you I didn't. Just, <laughs> like I did not get the questions to you. I wrote her an email and I was like, don't stress. We're we're just going to talk about your book. No stress. I wrote, do we need, want, I, I wrote on my notes. So just for the record, now you've got, talked about capacity. And then I wrote, why do we need to give ourselves permission to slow down? That was what I wrote in my notes. So oh. girl, you literally, <laughs> you can't see That's my notes. Funny. No. <laughs> like, almost, I think we're on the same page. That's what I would, I would beg to, to argue. We are on definitely on the same page. What is it about us? We are, it's like we're scared to death to tell ourselves that it's okay to say no to this or it. And I really think that that's so much of where the, the stress comes from is that we don't give ourselves permission. Right. We don't. As women, for some reason, we wrap up our value and worth with what we can do and be for others. I'm not sure when that started, but that's just the truth. And yeah. so there are circles that we're in, whether it's our children's school, whether it's our church, where that's the norm. And it's almost praised the more you can be there. No oh, one's yeah. going to say no to volunteers. <laughs> Badge of honor. Yep. Yeah. And so I think, again, taking that honest look and saying, is this really what I want? You know, COVID 
eased up and, and life shifted a little bit more, you would not believe the women that, that would say to me, gosh, I really kind of liked it. Is that weird? Like all the hard things that came with it. No, none of us want to relive, but wow, I don't know if I'm even made to go that fast again. I don't know if I want to. I'm like, yeah. no, why, why are you even asking if it's okay? Of course it's okay. Like slowing down to live the life you've been called to is, is your divine right. Why is everyone else speaking into your life? And it just goes back to the fact this is just how we've been conditioned. So it's not the rule that you have to do all these things. It's an expectation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we put those expect. We, they're self-inflicted. You know, the enemy doesn't come after us with like the blatant lies. I mean, we can spot the, my husband and I were talking about this this weekend. It's real easy to spot the big fat lies, but it's really hard to, to narrow down whenever he just twists the truth. And I think a lot of times the enemy says, well, if you were a good mom, you would say yes to this. If you're a good mom, then you're going to do da, da 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 fill in the blank, whatever it is. Or if you, and so I think the enemy has used this as a tactic against us. And it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's not blatant and in your face. There's on the surface, it didn't look like there's anything wrong with us saying yes to being the PTA secretary again, speaking yep. from experience right here. Oh. <laughs> Monterey High School PTA secretary right here in the flesh. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you no. love. But right. you might even have to say no to some other things. It might not be the PTA. There's not, yeah. you know, you're the only one who can decide what's right for you. Yes. So someone might say, well, yeah, we're going to all the swim meets like seven times this week. Yeah. Well, if that's mm -hmm. what your family's chosen to do. Then be all in. Yeah. But to do that, well, you're going to probably have to say no to a few other things. Hmm. Yeah. Can we talk about burnout for a minute? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> that's a fun one. <laughs> I mean, none of us have ever experienced burnout, Jody. I I can tell based on your life, you've just lived this life oh. where there's, burnout has not been a problem for you, right? Uh, well, I wish. That's one reason I wrote this book. I say in it, you know, <laughs> I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Let me just guide you so you don't have to make some of the mistakes I made. You know? Yeah. yeah. We, we've all had burnout to a degree. Mm. Yeah. That was, that was me in May. I, I was just being honest. I was, so my, my real job has uh, been real estate for 14 years. I've been a realtor, residential realtor, you know, so real estate's real busy in the spring. Yeah. Uh, podcast doesn't stop. Kids activities, baseball and doing all the things, which I love. I love, I love these things. I love being with my people, but there's only so much, there's only so much of us. Right. And so I got, I'll, I just, I got to May and I was just, I mean, like praying I was going to make it through. Have you, you, you've been there that day, you know, those days you wake up yeah. and you're like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Like I just, yeah. and so the, but what was sad is my joy, my real passion and joy is this space right here. You and me, these conversations, this is where I just, I feel like I come alive. This is, and I was starting to get, it was starting to become a burden. And I okay. thought, oh yeah. man, oh man, this is, the Lord never intended, it, it's a burden to carry, but it's a joyful thing to carry. And I know that there's a lot of people that are, are walking around right now. They're just flat burned out. Mm -hmm. And yeah. how, how do we, whenever, whenever quitting isn't an option, what do we do with burnout? Yeah. So at times when we can't quit, acceptance is a big thing because even just acceptance is that exhale, right? We know mm -hmm. there's seasons when we can't stop something, but if we're in a posture of acceptance, that's also part of, even when slowing down is chosen for us, it's the same thing. It's acceptance. So yeah. that part doesn't go away. But I would say just asking God, what are ways that he can love on you or hold you during this time. Because the other problem is we, we don't talk about is we think we can do everything and we think we have the control over everything and we don't. 
And so inevitably, it's not just like, well, we can be busy and we're good. It's like, no, that burnout shows us, no, there's been some pretty big things that didn't go the way they were supposed to. And so a lot of that causes burnout because we're just stretched so thin. So one thing, it may sound so easy, but just taking 10, 15 minutes, set the timer and go sit outside just with your coffee Nature, I call it, where's your island in the city? Where's your soul care sanctuary? (laughs) That quiet time with God. Yeah, so I've had people just um, say, you know, maybe all I needed was a little pocket of time. I didn't need to quit this whole thing. And I'm like, well, sometimes you can't. You can't. You have to put it in that category and say, it's April. I actually can't quit this thing. It ends in May naturally. I'm going to need to move through it. What do I do? to be able to move through it, which you have to do again in the fall and at Christmas season. So just finding small things where you can linger, linger with God, linger over a meal with a friend. I have, I love coffee dates with friends and some people are like, well, that just seems busy. I'm like, it's not, it's life-giving for me so that I do have the capacity to go do some things I have to do. So if you ask God just to show you, okay, this is a a really hard season, Lord. You knew this was coming. How do I live the best way for myself, for my family? I always tell people, they say, well, is it wrong if I'm busy? I'm like, not if you're not hurting anything. If you say, gosh, well, I, I am. I'm hurting the relationship with my kids. They're upset that I'm not there for them. Well, then you probably do need to slow down. Yeah, yeah well, sure. Yeah. So I think there's different levels of burnout, but the smallest things are really what get us back on track. Even if it's for the day, it may not, yeah. it might be so small, it won't work for the whole month. But if you implement small things, then it helps you not have to drag yourself to the vacation at the end of that crazy period. <laughs> That's That shouldn't happen. <laughs> We shouldn't no. be so exhausted that we can barely make it to the vacation we've been waiting for. So Yeah, that's true. Well, and yeah. yeah, again, I think you were reading my mail because I feel like that's pretty much what I did this summer. Like <laughs> we got to the beach, we went to the beach because I am a beach girl. Yeah. And I mean, I laid on that beach in that under that umbrella for like days at a time and did nothing and was just flat exhausted and just thought do I have to, in fact, I text my friend and I was like, hey, listen, I'm tr- actively trying to figure out a way that I could continue to do this right. from right here. Yeah. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> is it wrong that I don't want to go home? I just want to <laughs> stay right here. <laughs> yeah. But that's, yeah, that. I, and I, I my, my son asked me, he was like, do you think people get tired of the beach? And I was like, I, I don't think so. <laughs> if you do, man. <laughs> I yeah. could live there. Could live there all the days of my life, and unapologetically. Yeah. Um, and you know, Christy, I've had years where we couldn't have a vacation, right? Yeah. And so, what do you do then, right? Okay. Uh, you know, you might have listeners that are like, "Well, wait a minute, I, I, that wasn't an option for me this yeah. summer." And so, again, those little places of solitude are so important. They're like little mini vacations for your mind and your soul. So it's it's just really important. I think rhythms like that are important instead of saying, well, just go to bed earlier or just, you know, yeah. some of these uh-huh. things are not natural for us. And yeah. maybe we don't even want to, you know. Well, and I think, do you think, uh, this is one of the things that as you were talking, I thought, I'm going to ask her this. I think sometimes maybe burnout comes because we're not getting our cup filled back up the way that we need to, like you and I were talking about being introverts and extroverts before we started uh, recording. And if you're an introvert, you need some, you need some time alone. Yeah. And if you're an extrovert, you're going to get, you're, you're going to not be feeling like the best version of yourself if you're not, if you don't have time with your people. So I, I think that's something too, that burnout, slowing down to recognize where, how you need to be filled up and where you need to be absolutely, filled up. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's part of self-care and soul care yeah. is if you know yourself, 
make sure you're filled up with the right things so you can keep doing these things that you're obligated to do that you've said yes to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. You are so yeah. that's correct. Uh, what does, when everything slowed down, whenever God slowed you down, you were sick, you were struggling, as you made this switch to to slower living, to learning how to exhale, what are, whenever you talk about your little things, how do you, besides white space and besides mm -hmm. finding, finding more time with the Lord and, and, and yeah, I heard you say earlier, lingering with a friend and, and I read in your book too, and I, that, you know, Jesus lingered. Yeah. I loved that. You talk about how he, he, he would slow down to have, make a, fish fry on the beach with his friend. I was just going to say that. Yeah. That's I one of my favorite sure. images. Yes. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I loved that. And I thought, how often do we not just do those things? Because how often, you know, when we, when we're super busy and we don't want to go to that thing, that's going to be fun, but then we go and we're like, oh my gosh, that was so much fun. Why don't I do that more often? It's those right. lingering times. It's that stuff. And so it is. When, yeah. when I read that, you talked about how Jesus lingered. I thought, oh, we could so take a page from that, couldn't we? Yeah. Jesus lingered so many places with so many people, and he still managed to get his father's work done. Yeah. You know. And so if he yeah. can, I think we can probably hang out with a friend for an afternoon. I don't right. think the world's going to end. Right. I think we'll it still won't. accomplish what we it need won't. to. Yeah. 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 Totally. Well, I have 18 slow living practices in my book, one in each okay. chapter. And mm -hmm. so a few things that that help me besides the lingering and the capacity. One is just awakening to beauty. That mm -hmm. has been something in the last few years that I've noticed more people are talking about and it's like you just come alive. So even if that means a walk in your neighborhood, you might see a flower you just, you didn't notice before, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's so many little things that when we awaken to beauty, it, it helps us in these hard times of feeling like we're just too busy, pausing and so savoring, seeking out solitude, um, expectancy. Are we expectant for good things? You know, sometimes we just Talk don't. About that. Yeah. I, I feel like, you know, God is our good father. He's the good shepherd. But if we don't slow down, we don't even see some of the gifts right in front of us. And for me, sometimes, I'm sad to say this. It's been people. I've been so busy looking for my the next thing I'm supposed to do or something that feels like it's gone wrong. I don't see the souls right in front of me saying, hey, we're here for you, Jody. We're right here. So people is something that God's been really showing me. Community people is super important and a really good reason to slow down for ourselves and for them. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever, have you gotten to go back to, I know this is totally random, but have you ever gotten to go back to Bonaire? A couple recently? of times. Yeah. A couple yeah. of times. Do you still have family I, yeah. there or friends there? Or? Um, not family, but friends. Some of my childhood friends have come back to the island with their children and are living there. So yeah, I hope to go back. I hope to go back soon. It'd be really mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. I bet it is. I, I, I can feel like just even, you know, whenever you you start thinking about just you know, th there is, it's life giving to think about just slowing down a little bit and that we don't have to be in quiet. So there are times where you have to hurry. You don't have a choice. Yeah. Right. There right. are times where life is fast, but creating some, some buffer and some bumper, like the bumpers, like bumpers along your, your bowling alley. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like that's kind of, that's the white space in my mind. I'm like, that's what's keeping me from going off the rails. Yeah. Oh, um, I like that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, you, this is such a gift. And I, if my friends who, if you're not following Jody on social media, go over to Instagram. I don't know if you're on Facebook or not. If you are, we'll, I'll connect you, but yeah, uh, go over and find Jody Grubbs on Instagram and we'll put her link on the show notes wherever you're listening. And then is it jodygrubbs.com? Is that your website? It's jodygrubbs.com is my website and jody.grubbs is my Instagram. 
Yeah. Okay. Perfect. There we go. Yeah, we'll get yeah. those both definitely added. Is there anything else you want to add? This is, ugh, I could talk to you all day. <laughs> oh, thanks. It's been so fun. Well, I just wanted to say thank you for the work that you're doing. It's really important. And thank you for making the space for me to be on and to talk about these things. I think they're really important. So they are. Yeah. It's, it's fun. Yeah. I love, I love what I do. I love this. I, this is, I can tell. Is, yeah. I Well, and I get to like, it's like, I, I, I had a friend tell me, she's like, I think it's like you're having coffee with somebody and we all just kind of get to listen to the conversation. And I'm like, that's right. exactly what I want it to be. I want the, I, that's what I want these, the space to be. And it certainly has been that with you today, my friend. Oh, thank you. I feel the same way. One of my favorite things is having coffee with girlfriends. So I feel like we have done that virtually today, Christy. We, we have. <laughs> well, it is raining in your part. De- Hurricane, De- well, we're recording this. Hurricane Debbie has been making its way through the North Carolina area. And so I've been, my friend Amber Cullum, I think you yeah. know, and yeah, I Amber texted and her friends. and I was like, are yeah. y'all okay? Are you floating away? <laughs> <laughs> She was like, oh, we're still here. And so yep. anyways, yep. thank you for being with us today. You are just a joy, my friend. You're welcome. Thanks for the opportunity, Christy. Yeah. Friends, I am grateful for each of you. My my sweet listener family, we're back. I feel like I feel like the gang's all back together. I feel like we're we're all ready to to take on this semester together. And friends, if you aren't subscribed to my newsletter, go over to christylow.com slash newsletter. Get get subscribed because that's where you find out all the the lowdown on all the other uh, like the cool stuff that's coming down the pike. And and I don't spam people, so y'all know me. I'm not spammage. So Anyways, y'all, thanks for being here. I am so glad we're back together and I look forward to all that the Lord holds for us in this coming season, friends. So thank you again for being here and good Lord willing, I will see each of you next week.